Time to get the sketchbooks ready, some ideas ready, paint. We're gonna have a blast today doing some fun stuff with Vincent Van Gogh. Hey class, welcome back. Today we're getting into part three of our Van Gogh experience. Today we're gonna to be using that big room experience from the previous video. So if you haven't watched those, go back and watch those. Today we're gonna to be using the big room experience to really drive some creative ideas. Now for this video, I didn't want to kind of set it to just my high school students or just my middle school students, even though that's what I do focus on the most. I really wanted to set this from kindergarten all the way through a senior in high school. Now I broke this down into three different ideas. So for my elementary students, one thing to think about is how we do movement in painting. I like to put something up on the screen and have you guys watch a video, watch something and listen to music, listen to ideas as you guys are painting. I think it creates a better creative process. For my middle school students, I want you guys to think about the historical aspects of this. How do we use this to drive our sketchbooks? Sketchbooks is one of those things that I think not enough people take into account of like, we really need to sit down and just throw out some ideas. This is to help give you guys that time. Use this to watch, get ideas and we're gonna transition that into high school where you're taking those ideas and you're really creating a story, a full blown, epic something that you want to really something that you want to expand upon and make a series of pieces out of now for my elementary kids i've got a sheet of paper here just a regular piece of white paper some paint using watercolor here a couple brushes you can use a flat brush a round brush flat brush it's this one's the flat brush flat brush is kind of squared off looking where the round brush is more of a tapered or uh, rounded at the top. Now, this one's this one's more tapered, which means it comes to a point. Again, you wanna start painting light to dark in your pieces, but I'm gonna start off by drawing a simple design of Starry Night. Now, do you have to do Starry Night? No, but I do recommend something by Vincent Van Gogh because we're watching his stuff and you wanna, you know, learn from the master starting off here with a couple simple pencil lines again i'm not doing a lot of detail i'm just doing an overview an outline of my image and i'm transferring that across the paper then once i have the image done i'm gonna start putting in some paint now painting light to dark the lightest color that we're going to paint with that's on the page is not white because our paper is white we're gonna start off with yellow so for the yellow i want to hit that nice big beautiful moon that I got up in the right hand corner there adding a little bit of color to that again giving space to show the white paper beneath it because we don't have that paint on our palette we're using the paper to show where the white is creating little streaks and showing movement of how the light moves across the sky now we're doing the same thing with blue here in just a second as I'm taking blue, I'm gonna create lines, strips of color that are going from left to right, going in little arcs, giving little bits of dashes there. That shows that element of movement because we have that little bit of design as the paint is moving across the paper. Also, you have that little bit of line, little bit of jumping to it. Looks like those little white streaks in the road gives us a little bit more of how the items move through the sky. Now, as you're watching this video, think about all the different imagery that you see. Start jotting stuff down. Now, notice one of the things about Van Gogh that he uses is a sketching line. That line has a lot of jumps. It's not a single solitary line. Make sure that your paper's coming off of that, pe that paper all the time. You basically want to be skipping and jumping across the page because that's gonna create the line structure that we usually see Van Gogh do. We wanna see that movement all the way across our page. As you guys are creating these items here, let's look at the stuff that he's talking about. Now, in a previous video, I did a whole thing on history. So if you re want to rewatch that to get some other I deep dive into those ideas, you can. Looking at this video here, we're going through the story of Van Gogh and how he learned through his over the course of his life to create different pieces and to different create different styles in his paintings. So how can we use that style to drive the images that you guys make? If you want to just do shoes and you want to just do manga, by all means, do it, but do it in Van Gogh's style. Take it where you're throwing those dashed lines, those brilliant quick pieces of color. Remember, impressionism was all about the moment. You want to capture the light of the moment. That's the impressionistic style. So how can we transfer that into a shoe design? How can we transfer the colors, the lines that he's putting into his page and just drawing it as shoes? You guys need to figure that out. That's why we're doing it in our sketchbooks, coming up with those ideas off top of our head. Time to move into my high school students now. Now, 
for you guys, we're expanding what we've already done. So my elementary kids did one thing, my middle school students did another thing, high school students, you guys are creating a epic pieces, several. Using the sketchbooks, start off there. Look at the, the paintings that this man made. This man had a long life that went over several different things. Studied artwork by a Japanese artist. He painted in, in person in front of different things, usually he painted at night, or there's a lot of night essence in his paintings. So we see these dark, brilliant blues, these crisp, warm, golden colors to showcase the light, how light is escaping from the artwork. But if you want to study light more, I'd check out Raphael. Dude was a master of light. But now looking at Van Gogh and how he painted light quickly to showcase that scene and wanted to give the warmth of the characters. For a man who is so isolated by himself, how much the light is coming out in a way and he's looking in at where the light used to be kind of profound stuff so in you guys' sketchbook start off a series of pieces that focuses on things that he's got a body of work that just expands kind of the person's existence where he had limited friends people who he saw people he always saw from a distance so let's get into the storytelling process now man paints a cafe this beautiful exquisite picture of a, of a exterior of a cafe the light shining people are laughing inside you can see that people are there having a good time relaxing you have starry night beautiful scenery of a village at night the beautiful sky above everything is moving around almost in a dreamlike state then you have starry night over the rhone which is that like water-esque painting where it's like a bridge out there and you have all these stars above and the star reflections below it's again it's a beautiful scenery but here's the thing who was he sharing all of these moments with wheat field with crows who's in the field with them nobody man had a very lonely existence so how can we use that to help drive some of our ideas for ourselves how can we make an epic series of pieces around a centralized idea and expand it out just like he did you have all these beautiful golds and and yellows and blues but it's like a rich royal deep like beautifully hunger blue all these things are kind of compressed together and you have that series you have those visuals that are tying together how can you tell your own story by looking at some of these artworks and coming up with ideas and fleshing them out in your sketchbook and making a series of four five six twenty pieces that all work together and create that cohesiveness that's you guys' task very open-ended but should be interesting all right, so the rest of the assignment today, we're going to be watching, kicking back and watching the expansion in the Van Gogh experience. I want you guys to kind of have that same feeling to it. If you guys have a ability to see this on a giant screen, the biggest TV that you got, put it up there, sit back, kick back, relax, grab some popcorn, and it's just a lot of fun. Watch it two or three times. It was good. It was great. I loved it. I, that's half the reason why I filmed it, just so I can watch it again later use it in class myself it's good stuff all right let's let's hit play
It's comfortable to walk on. And your flowers grow there.
To make sketches is to plant seeds from which paintings grow. Awesome class. I hope that you guys had as much fun as I did watching that. It's it's so much fun to see those amount the amount of artworks. It was a very well done show. Again, if it comes to your town, it comes within two hours drive a two hour drive. It's totally worth it. Go get the tickets. Go walk. Go check it out. It's kick back. It's just it was a blast. Go if you if you can they can get the chance. Don't let this one pass you up. It's just one of those beautiful experiences that I fully fully want you guys to go and experience it just the same. But again, with everything that's going down, I want you guys to be safe. Take care of each other. Um, do what you can to, to be proactive in that. As always, I hope that you guys got something fun and engaging out of this experience. And let's knock out our homework, which is to like, share, subscribe on all the various platforms. Get the message out there to as many people, teachers, students that we possibly can. Spread the message. Engaging others so much more fun don't forget if you guys had a question comment or concern raise the hands in the comments below happy to answer the questions for my classmates other than that i'll see you guys next class i'm gonna go watch this again i'll see you guys later have a good one later guys